Welcome to the South Florida Access. I'm Moni Lebro, your host. We're back in our studio after a long time, and dear, did we miss it. In today's episode, we're going to talk to you about politics, of course, places in South Florida like Jungle Island, and about your wellness and mindfulness. Now, my great honor to introduce the President-elect of the United States of America, Joe Biden. After four long, nail-biting days for Americans, major news networks projected Joseph R. Biden as the president-elect of the United States on Saturday morning. On Saturday night, President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris addressed the nation. His first priority, assembling a coronavirus task force. During Biden's victory speech, he talked about unity, asking Donald Trump supporters to give him a chance. As president-elect, Biden has repeatedly said he seeks to unify rather than to divide. Since president-elect Biden was projected winner of the 2020 election, he has 290 electoral votes. Hello, my fellow Americans. How have the polls looked and voters reacted in this crazy close presidential election? This is what South Florida Media Network's Andrea Gonzalez tells us. This election was definitely a historical one. The U.S. set record for voter turnout and most of these voters casted in their ballots early. But that wasn't the case for everyone. Some of these voters actually waited until election day to vote. Let's find out why. Voting elections, I was like, oh, I'll go tomorrow, I'll go tomorrow. And then it was November 1st and I couldn't go anymore. So I was like, okay, November 3rd, I gotta do it. So I, I voted. Well, I was out of town and I made it back in time. So it was perfect. I got there, it went super smooth. So I think it was a good day to vote. So that made it perfect for me. More than ever before, voters went out to cast their votes early and poll workers were surprised to see that people were still coming in to vote on election day. A lot of people coming, it has been a beautiful, beautiful day. And uh, more people than we expected, but uh, most of the people, I think, have been voting by uh, mail. Most voters were anxious to receive the results on election night. But to their surprise, the anxiety continued for three long days. On election day, enthusiastic voters at the polls expressed what changes they would like to see, regardless of who wins the presidential race. I really hope that they get to, they get us to treat us all equal, you know, whether you're Nicaraguan, Black, Mexican, any race. From South Florida Access, this was Andrea Gonzalez. Since the pandemic hit many zoos, animal parks, and sanctuaries closed temporarily, our reporter Valeria Venturini talked to Jungle Island and a sanctuary about their situation. What's happened to animal parks and sanctuaries during the pandemic? Well, nothing has stopped them from taking care of the animals. Troy Macala, a young man in North Miami, has his own self-made sanctuary where he has all types of reptiles from snakes to Indian bearded dragons. Even though the pandemic has slowed his business, he continues to provide a safe space to the animals. The animals themselves, they have not been infected. Um, they still are getting fed adequately regularly. They're still getting their, their treatments. They're still out enjoying the nice weather. For Jungle Island Amusement Park, their mission of educating families continues as they have taken advantage of digital media to provide fun activities to families. Online, so they were also doing Facebook live interviews with some of the animal caretakers um, just to learn about uh, not only just, you know, some of the rare animals that are at Jungle Island, but kind of the level of care and and different ways that they were having to handle, especially the primates that are so close in DNA to humans, very creative. And they started offering um, what's called Zoom, Zoom, Zoom interviews. And just as we have seen with online classes, work from home and health, animals haven't been the exception when it comes to change. For the South Florida Access, Valeria Venturini. Have you been stressed out working and studying from home? 
the South Florida Media Network, Paola Marcano Bolivar tells us, here are some practices people have picked up amid chaos. COVID-19 has given us plenty of time to take up new habits. Meditation, yoga, crystals, and more wellness practices have been the choice of many. I mean, I've noticed, you know, a lot of new people, like brand new people, you know, just kind of seeking, you know, peace or protection or help with their health or, you know, just being kind of overall happier, you know, with everything that's going on, um, especially this year, obviously more than other years. Um, so I think it's, I don't think it's a bad thing to be trendy. I think, you know, anything that promotes a, a better way of life and, you know, a happier um, way of living is a, is a positive trend. This crystal shop located in Pine Crest, Miami has items that are used for healing, meditation, divination, and more. Um, and it's fun and yes. it's beautiful, you know, it's like win-win. Um, definitely all the different statues, you know, we love different things from Eastern philosophy, you know, Tibetan, Buddhism, um, all the different deities that, you know, help. Same thing, you know, same thing as having crystals in your home. It's, you know, they're representing a, an, an energy. So we have um, different tools for sound healing. Singing bowls are one of my favorites. energy points in the body. Um. And remember, it doesn't matter if you're an expert, a beginner, or just curious. There's something out there for everyone. This was Paola Marcano for South Florida Access. Back to my meditation. High fashion and ecological responsibility can go hand in hand. South Florida Media Network's Giseli Solis spoke to a local designer who focuses on sustainability. Welcome to the South Florida Access. My name is Yuseli Solis, and on today's episode, I sit down with Stephanie Navarrete. Navarrete is a designer and small business owner from Miami, Florida. Stephanie Navarrete is a freelance designer and tutor for the Miami Fashion Institute who took the initiative to create her new brand, Ask Nava Designs, combining art and fashion after coming up with the idea as part of her senior thesis in college. It started um, my senior year of college when I was um, in New York City developing my um, senior thesis. Um, I got almost like an artist block, but um, something that pushed me through was um, I was on a road trip, so my family loves to go on road trips. We love to travel all of the United States. Um, we're on a mission to, um, to visit all 50 states. We're about like 35 now states now. So we were on a road trip um, one summer and I had my sketchbook and I just started doodling, sketching, whatever. I brought it back, I went back to New York City and um, I based my collection off of um, those doodles that I did. Um, my professor was like, you have something going on here. So I pushed through that. In addition, I started looking through like old family memories, like looking through albums, painting those. So S Nava Designs is like great mix of art and fashion. Stephanie studied at Dash Miami and fell in love with fashion design after taking electives in the field. With that, she found that she could mix her two passions, art and fashion design. I chose fashion design because I was like, I, my heart was set on art, but I was like, okay, might as well learn a new, um, a new field. And so I was like, might as well, like I could make my own pants. Like I thought of it, of it as like going into this field as like, okay, I could make my own clothes, but still having my heart set, set on art. After studying at the Fashion Institute of New York, Navarrete moved back home to Miami in 2018. Since then, she has brought New York's high fashion to projects she's been a part of in Miami. Though it has not been easy, she is surely becoming a part of Miami's fashion scene. It's been two years. I graduated 2018. So it's 2020, it's been two years. Um, Miami, it's very bare. Like I'm telling you, it is a struggle here as far as a fashion designer. Even like working for a company, the companies offer here are like Perry Ellis, um, um, uniform companies. And for me, coming from New York City, like you said, high fashion, like everything, working at a uniform company, my mind was like, no, you know? Um, but God did open a door at Miami Fashion Institute. Navarrete values sustainability so much that she has made a pact to stop supporting fast fashion brands. Sustainability goes, um, 
in college, in fact, I took a science class because we, we, we just had to take um, academic courses. Um, and this science teacher in specific, she kind of opened my eyes to um, sustainability. I, I haven't really thought about it, not gonna lie to you, until that college semester where she showed us like the true cost. If you haven't watched it, that's like one of the, the basic 101 sustainability, like watch that film and that changes your perspective on fashion sustainability and from then on she kept showing us um, different things um, that ha has been occurring in fashion and I'm like whoa but I'm studying this you know um, but she has opened my eyes to um, how fashion has been such a huge impact though she is starting her business during a pandemic she is hopeful about the future and has many visions for her brands she's making travel a big element of her brand and also promoting other artists businesses and designers i have ideas and i do have plans for my brand um i do have to kind of like a way out this pandemic situation and see where what happens because my brand is art fashion and traveling so there are three um three elements and the traveling portion although i i did travel just recently i did a curated closet um so as far as the five-year plan goes i hopefully god willing you know this pandemic cools down and i'm able to travel more and do curated closets so what a curated closet is in Esnava Designs is, like I mentioned earlier, my mom loves road trips. So we we go on road trips. Like the first career to closet I did, we flew to Washington, then we took a train to Canada, then we took the train back, then we drove all the way down to California and did like state parks. And every day I would wear a new garment. Um, either I made it or a designer has made it so that's almost like the future of Esnava. i will be doing more curated closet traveling like visiting new sites you know um because i feel like no one road trips anymore uh, but encouraging others to live life but also to dress sustainably have a sustainable lifestyle every day i will wear something i made or i would promote like another designer another artist because S Nova Designs is not just for myself, it's for other artists and designers as well. It was a pleasure speaking to Stephanie about things like designing, her love of fashion, and sustainability. This was an amazing episode and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for sitting down with me. My name is Yuseli Solis from the Southward Access.